Hello and welcome. I'm your host Misha Bajwa Chaudhary and I welcome you all to this very special show where we get to meet the real heroes, the torch bearers of our society. Today we bring you news that's not just groundbreaking but also historic. Sri Chaitanya Educational Institutes has set a record in 2023 that is unparalleled, securing All India First ranks in three of the country's toughest competitive exams: JEE Main, JEE Advanced, and NEET. Yes, a triple crown with AIR one in all three. But wait, the tale of time doesn't end here. In the JEE Advanced 2023 rankings. Sri Chaitanya's students claimed an eye-popping 80% of the top 5 all India ranks. That's four of the top 5 positions. Moreover, they contributed to 50% of the top 10 and top 20 all India ranks. These aren't just numbers; they are a testament to an educational institution operating at the pinnacle of excellence. And there is more to celebrate. A staggering 18,736 students qualified for JEE Advanced. 3,621 Sri Chaitanya students are set to become IITians, and an incredible 20,658 students made the cut in NEET. These figures alone speak volumes about the institute's efficacy in preparing students for the most competitive exams in the nation. This level of achievement is built on the pillars of Sri Chaitanya's comprehensive curriculum, elite faculty, and cutting-edge educational resources. It's not just a victory for the institute; it's a watershed moment for the educational landscape of India, setting new benchmarks that will be the talk of the academic world for the years to come. So, here is to Chaitanya and their exceptional students. Congratulations on this monumental, historic success. Truly, you have rewritten the rule book on what is achievable in the realm of competitive exams. Proud of living and breathing our brand values. I was going through your uh, profile. You studied B Tech from Bits Pilani. Yes. You did masters in IT from US, and then you came back to India. we would like to know uh, more about your journey so my journey started off with uh, you know family of educators mm -hmm. uh, right my parents both are doctors and uh, they have a deep passion for education even from the beginning i think they come from a very modest background where they believe education is the way to make a path forward and make a career for anyone to elevate yourself to a good economic background where you don't have to worry about smaller things i think that's uh, the background and the fundamental of how we grew up and the family we came from kids when they are kids they do not take want to take up their parents profession or their business so were you always prepared mentally that you would end up with this place not really it was always uh, an option mm -hmm. you know for the uh, 38 years it's been since sri chaitanya was founded and the first 20 years i i have been a distant spectator mm -hmm. right okay. or a close spectator i would say part of the family that would have that would be our dining table conversations or constantly every day people would come in teachers would come in leave the home after meeting with my parents uh, so i grew up in that environment actually because we live we used to live in the campus itself on the campus where there are a lot of 2000 students around us so it was a very uh, close knit community and my experiences you know though i was a spectator i could gather a lot of information from it but yes i never had the intent or the determination to come back and take on and that was never a path for me mm -hmm. or a determined path for path for me at least of course it was always an option miss papana you literally transformed the education system today shri chaitanya is one of the country's leading educational institutions with over 8 lakhs 50,000 students in more than 850 schools across over 250 cities in 26 states. How was the journey? I mean, what was the scale at which your parents started Sri Chaitanya? So my parents started off with a very simple, modest one campus with 86, 82 students mm -hmm. the first year, and I think the thought came from uh, the lack of proper facilities for girl students. are uh, to stay in a campus study um, and finish everything that they need to do and attempt competitive exams to go into either engineering or medical i think at that point of time there was no 
integrated curriculum or no residential system for 11th and 12th, which we call you know, in Andhra junior colleges. Mm -hmm. So we did not have that system at that point of time. So it was really innovative of them to come up with that plan and start that. And I'm sure it required lots of guts and you know, lots of courage to be able to come from a medical profession and start that. So it's been almost like three decades of successful journey. Uh, I would want to understand from you, what's your vision or mission in this uh, journey now? So our mission has, very, has been always very, very simple to provide affordable education, a good quality education for any student who are inspired, right? And so we constantly look for uh, students who are worthy to sponsor and students who have the passion to educate themselves and change their lives. And we've been uh, always supportive of that. Let's talk about youngster. You were saying that the learners. So uh, what do you do, uh, especially for the, the kids who are underprivileged in a way that um, they have financial situations which they cannot, uh, for example, they cannot afford expensive education or they live in remote areas and they cannot imagine living a big city dream. So how are you contributing uh, to their lives? So over a period of time, we have evolved into contributing in several different ways, right? because every family is different, every child's requirement is different. And we have boarding facilities also where we help move those students to boarding facilities. So they are taken care of completely and the parent does not even have to bear the expense of educating the child or uh, you know, ensuring that the child is healthy, healthy, well-fed. You know, all of these factors also come into play. Uh, so we have partnered with governments also where we educate uh, government school students and we train the teachers, we provide books as well and we partnered with a lot of government programs where students actually come to us and they stay with us in boarding facilities. So it's like a partnership between them and us and in every state we have those programs where because we strongly believe in every child's right to education. So uh, help us understand your early champion formula as known as you, you call it winning formula. Yes. So we would want to understand how you create winners or champions out of those nervous anxious kids. So there are two parts to it. The first part is students who are already with Sri Chaitanya or mm -hmm. have joined Sri Chaitanya already. Because then we have an integrated curriculum where apart from taking care of their CBSC or state boards, we also create these additional advantages of students being prepared for Olympiads. The early champions formula is something we newly uh, launched. It's mainly for students who are not part of the Sri Chaitanya ecosystem, mm -hmm. but students who are studying elsewhere where there are no uh, Sri Chaitanya branch or for some reason they don't want to move. And we totally understand that. They might be in a current school where they have grown up with a lot of friends around and they don't want to suddenly change, right? Kids, mm -hmm. kids have that thing. Or maybe that's very close to their house and they want to continue there, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, year on year what happens is mo we see more number of students coming to us directly in 11th grade. And we see the struggle they're going through because they don't have the right concepts or fundamentals from an early age. Mm -hmm. And you know, that Fundamentals make a lot of difference when they come into 11th and 12th and they prepare for these competitive exams. These are high stakes exams which are super competitive, right? Um, especially for the best of colleges, either medical or engineering. So student who's intelligent and hardworking but haven't been given the right inputs or the right fundamental concepts or haven't been uplifted to that creative level of thinking while solving a problem. I think that is what we are trying to address there because I don't want kids Finally, uh, education is for kids, wherever the kid is, mm -hmm. we don't care. So if they are not part of Sri Chaitanya and if they are in some other schools, this is a program that we have designed for those kids during evenings or weekends where they can stabilize their academic uh, fundamental concepts in math and science and they can work with us in that journey so that way their um, level, you know, their level of stress comes down in 11th and 12th. So Ms. Bupana, let's now talk about the much talked about knowledge hub courses. If you could please elaborate the kind of courses that are offered and how are these courses enhancing the quality of education? So we have a lot of different verticals within Sri Chaitanya. We have the junior colleges, we have the Sri Chaitanya Techno Schools, which is a full-time program where students attend like any school. But we cover um, all kinds of things, whatever the student needs, CBSE and also preparation for competitive exams, etc. Now, coming to knowledge hubs, knowledge hubs are these centers, they are smaller centers and very well designed uh, for a student to be comfortable post-school. And these centers are for kids who are attending other schools 
and if they want to continue in those schools in the evenings they can come to us for four days a week for three hours a day or the weekends and you know they can access all our coaching materials it's mainly coaching centers they are uh, let's not talk about the much talked about or the necessity of this day and age online education do you see it as the the future of education or do you think it's just a transitional phase and it will phase out eventually we'll go back to the old methods so what happened during covid time is a transitional phase for sure everyone panicked and there were you know few companies offering all sorts of things now how much outcomes have been created to you know from that is the question because we are a very outcome based organization we constantly measure when a student came to us what level was he in mm -hmm. and when he exits re chaitanya how much did he improve so when coming back to your question i think uh, there are advantages and disadvantages of it uh, digital learning and online education mm -hmm. will definitely be there i don't think it's going to go away mm -hmm. uh, it will evolve and blended learning has several uh, advantages even in the classroom a teacher right now sri chaitanya teachers are using smart boards uh, to make sure they use a lot of 3d videos or a lot of videos to demonstrate and teach students that's also part of blended learning yeah. and you know students who are day students if they are at home and have to reach a uh, teacher for some doubts clarification or some counseling they need they can approach uh, the teachers through that so there are specific advantages of uh, this hybrid learning or blended learning that it's called um, but digital will stay for sure all right so uh, though you've already touched upon the future plans uh, of uh, sri chaitanya education institution but let's say if you have to put it in one line what is your uh, target uh, for 2025 let's say uh, we are working towards a vision now mm -hmm. um, by 2025 we expect to have 25 lakh learners Uh, either in sri chaitanya schools or through the digital infinity learn we want to reach out to at least 25 lakh learners and uh, we have a target of 1000 schools which we are close to very close to achieving uh, we are i think 100 schools short now and by 2025 we will definitely achieve that uh, we are present now in every state in the country or most states in the country by 2025 definitely i think every city will have sri chaitanya schools so the access for education should increase fabulous uh, now coming back to you uh, ms bopana we would of course want to uh, ask you one question but with two uh, perspectives that you want we want to gain from you uh, one is uh, because you've been uh, working and uh, how do you strike the because women do have a lot more pressure in terms of managing the family and then work so how are you creating that work life perfect balance and the other thing uh, what would you have to say about women empowerment because you uh, are an empowered woman what do you have to say to all the women out there trying to make a mark for themselves work life balance i think is overrated mm -hmm. frankly <laughs> and it's not easy to achieve let mm -hmm. me tell you it's quite challenging is it ev even achievable yeah it's i mean <laughs> i don't know it depends on what you want right, right? because every woman will have a different uh, way of looking at work life balance um it's definitely not easy mm -hmm. it's quite uh, confusing at times and i am sure every woman who is working will constantly think of am i doing the right thing for my family i think that's the question that will always keep bothering any working female right in the world but that's okay um who says you have to be perfect at everything correct right it doesn't have to be that way as long as you have the passion for what you're doing and you're doing the right thing and you're creating that impact wherever you are and at home if you are loving and caring and if you know how to prioritize it's okay the family will understand mm -hmm. and you know that way i've been blessed with uh, such a family you know my parents or in-laws or my husband or kids all of them want me to work mm -hmm. I, maybe they're scared of me <laughs> staying at home i don't know but <laughs> they are always uh, you know willing to let me go to work you know then they are not moody they don't uh, ask too much um, but i think it's important for every woman to be at peace with the, themselves and to prioritize also you know finally it comes to prioritize you can do it all mm -hmm. even for a woman who stays at home uh, can do it all there is always uh, a priority you need to decide okay what is important to be and where should i be How is this time better utilized? Sure. Ms. Bupana, thank you so much for joining us today. Your work is an inspiration to all of us thank you and so to much. all our viewers. Thank you for joining us.